Hello and welcome. You are listening to the Gay With God podcast, a safe place for us to share our stories and support one another. How long did we know? What challenges did we face? Did we lose our faith? When did we find our way back home? Or are we still searching? The stories you hear on this podcast will melt your heart and strengthen your belief that in God, all things are possible, and you can be, authentically, gay with the God of your understanding. I am your host, Midge Noble, and I am very honored that you are here. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Gay With God podcast. I'm so glad that you're here and that you are tuning back in with me. I'm thrilled to share with you this morning that I will be recording live from the Wild Goose Festival this July 11 through 14. The Wild Goose Festival is a transformational community grounded in faith-inspired social justice. It's a -a one-of-a-kind gathering that brings together activists, artists, and seekers from all walks of life to explore justice, art, spirituality, and community. It's going to be at the Van Hoy Farms in Union Grove, North Carolina, and I'd love for you to join me there. From engaging workshops to inspiring panels and interactive experiences, Wild Goose has something for everyone. So mark your calendars July 11th through the 14th, and let's be a part of this incredible community that is committed to making a positive impact in the world. You can get more information at www.wildgoosefestival.org and As a follower of mine, I have a special ambassador code to share with you. It is capital A dash capital M-I-D-G-E. That's A Midge. And you will get $50 off the price of an adult weekend ticket. So see you there. I'm so proud to be a Wild Goose podcaster. And I am so honored to be a part of this amazing community. I've never felt more welcomed in the gay community. At first, I thought it was a a gay festival when I got there. There were flags flying everywhere. So the LGBTQIA plus community is not only welcomed, but are we represented and I represent every time that I go. I will post that code also on the show page at empoweredmidge.podbean.com. Also, I wanted to tell you that I am trying to set up a Podbean Patreon site. That site's going to be accessible for free to those who have pre-ordered my book back in the day when you believed in me before I even finished the book. And for that, I will be eternally grateful to those of you who did pre-order my book. Some of you pre-ordered several at a time, and I hadn't even written the book all the way through yet. And I'm so honored that you believed in me enough believed in me more than I believed in me at the time. And so you will be gifted a free access to that account once I figure out how to set it up. The other things that will be on that account is some sneak peeks of things that are coming up and you'll get early access. You'll also be able to have some behind the scenes uh, comments and thoughts, not only on my day to day kind of life, from time to time, but also from the memoir, Gay with God, Reclaiming My Faith, Honoring My Story, I will be uh, popping in and giving some backstories that were not in the memoir. And I hope that this site will also be set up so that I can do some videos. So we'll see. It's a work in progress. I tried to do it earlier last year, and I just never could get it done. Um, We had so much going on in the family, but I'm hoping to try again to try to set that up. I, I think it is set up. I just haven't figured out how to work it, but that's an Aries. You know, that, that goes under the possible next memoir is Gay With God, The Adventures of the Lesbian Aries. But anyway, we'll see what happens. But I just wanted to throw that out there. So today, I do have a guest scheduled this afternoon to tape, but I didn't want uh, to wait that long to post the podcast, and so that guest will be posted next Monday. So today I wanted to do something that I said was a trigger warning. The reason that I said that is not because it's going to be something really horrible, but there have been a couple of comments made to me that people are surprised that I may not always be happy. And people are surprised 
that I may have a shadow side. Uh, it all started with a silly little game that we either are supposed to or not supposed to play on Facebook, depending on whether or not you want people to get information from you. But anyway, you know, they, they have these little Facebook games. And so I was listed as stubborn, bold and stubborn, I think it was, was mine. I'm not sure. Something in stubborn. And I was told that they couldn't see it in me. They didn't see that. And of course, my wife laughed. <laughs> because I can be stubborn but not just that I can I can also be someone that has other little shadow sides so I thought today I would talk about my top three I know that implies that I have many more and I probably do <laughs> but I'm gonna give you my top three some people start with a lower totem pole kind of thing and then they work up to their big shebang I'm just gonna start with the big shebang <laughs> so my number one shadow behavior has to do with my anger I can get angry so quickly over things it's usually due to someone disrespecting me and that can come in different forms it could be a blatant disrespect where they may say something to me Back in the day, I felt disrespected when someone just demanded that I do something and didn't have any consideration for my schedule or my client's schedules. It was that they needed something done and they were going to expect me to do it. And sometimes they did have the leverage to make that happen. When I look over the course of my life, I think that disrespect button got implanted there early on when I was the middle child. And I'm not using that as a cop out, but I do believe that I was lost sometimes in in my family because I had an older sister who had lots of medical conditions and she was the first child. And then after me was my younger brother who was the token male. And even though if you've read my memoir, you'll hear me talk about that and how that played out for both of them and how it played out in our family but for me and from my perspective I didn't feel respected and I didn't feel seen all the time and so I think that when that happens when someone disrespects me it feels dismissive and I feel vulnerable and sometimes I feel fear when I get angry. So it's not just the disrespect, but if I'm in a, a fearful moment, something is scaring me, I will always gravitate to anger because that's a power feeling. As we've talked about on this podcast before, anger is a power emotion. And when you're doing that, you're acting out in some fashion and you cannot feel the vulnerability or the fear inside of you. You would probably think you're not fearful at that time. But for me, it comes in starting to mouth off about whatever's ticked me off or whatever is happening to me. And I may slam some things. <laughs> and it can be really awful. My wife has described my anger as, as a like a, a fog coming out of me and she can actually feel it. Um, I don't know if anybody else feels it, but she can definitely feel it. I'm telling you this, and for those who don't want to know that there are shadow sides of me, I want to be fully authentic and let you guys know that my life is not perfect and I'm not perfect. I've never been perfect. And I'm grateful that when I miss the mark in my life, that I can go back and look at the pattern of this. And to give you a moment of private reflection, I want to talk about growth and grace. So I never really gave myself any grace. And I've only learned really since just before and during the writing of the memoir in the last couple of years, I worked really hard on giving grace to people in my family. And my spiritual director said one time, I think you might want to consider giving yourself some grace which was a foreign concept to me. I hold myself to a unnatural and unhealthy standard. So in this podcast episode today, I do want to talk about growth and grace for myself. So my anger is still a shadow side of me. I can recognize, though, that that anger is not as frequent as it used to be when I was younger, and it is definitely 
not as explosive as it used to be. I want to tell you that I have never physically attacked another person out of anger. Have I had thoughts of doing that? Absolutely. I have never actually done it. So I do give myself grace for that, that there is a limit for how far I've gone in my anger. Although it can scare me because it is so explosive and so quick, and I don't want to be explosive, and especially not with anger. So I have worked on it, and I have definitely made progress in how I manage my anger. Is it over? Absolutely not. And things can still catch me off guard and my mouth starts spouting things. And I don't know exactly what that's about, although it's to me, it feels like I'm letting the steam out of a pot, that the mouthing part of it is a way to try to just get it from the inside out of my body. And that is something I still want to try to catch and change because it's not healthy for me. I also want to give myself grace for not giving up on it, for continuing to recognize where my shadow parts are and how it affects other people and how it affects me and being vigilant at always growing, always expanding in love. Because I talk about love all the time because that really is where my heart is. And the shadow part comes when I'm in those low emotions of anger and fear. And so I just understand now that I can miss the mark and still be God's beloved and still be loving and still be the person that I really am. And then when I dip into that shadow side of me, I catch it and I change it, and I go back to being the authentically loving person that I choose to be and that I am most of the time. And that's where the grace comes in, that I have to remind myself, these are isolated incidents. It's not how I live every day, all day long. So, whew, talk about giving you the big one first. <laughs> but that's not the only one that I have. So number two on my list is the petty party of one. Not to be confused from pity party of one, it's petty party of one, where I can get really petty, especially when people have offended me and done things that I find absolutely horrible. I will do things that I'm going to describe for you next. So last night, the football games were on. And my beloved wanted to be home from the cabin so that she could watch Kansas City play against the Ravens. And that game was awesome. And I love to watch them play, too. We have dear friends that live in Kansas. And we have been little chief fans as long as they're not playing people that we normally pull for. But we love the Chiefs. And, you know, we really celebrate when they win. So we watched that first game. And clearly, we were all in for the Chiefs and so excited that we got home in time to see the first touchdown, much chagrin after the, they scored a touchdown right after us. But anyway, it was a great game, and we cheered hard, and we were very, very excited. Then the next game came up between the Detroit Lions and the San Francisco 49ers. Now, normally, I would always pull for the 49ers because, you know, I'm a fan of San Francisco, and I love all of my community there. So I would have normally pulled for them anyway. However, the Detroit Lions, Cinderella team, I usually always pull for underdogs when I have the chance, no matter who they are or where they are, until last night. And for some reason, the petty party shadow person showed up. And I said to my beloved, I wonder if Detroit, as a city, voted for Trump. Now, what does this have to do with football and pulling for a team and going for the underdog? Absolutely nothing. That's why it's petty. And not only did I recognize that it was petty 
And my wife gave me that smile that made me know that it was probably petty. Did I stop there? No. I googled it. Yes. Yes, I did. I googled it to see whether or not in 2024 is the city of Detroit pulling for Trump. And this is what I found out. That they are voting, as the polls suggest, slightly pulling for Trump. Now, the petty didn't stop there. Not only did I Google it for no reason whatsoever, really, because it wouldn't have really mattered. However, I did Google it, and then I found out that they are slightly pulling for Trump. And you, you can guess it. You know what I did. I quit pulling for the Lions. I pulled for San Francisco. Now, boy, did I get <laughs> karma right away. <laughs> because then, of course, the Lions took off like a shot. You would have thought that they were the premier team, the team that should have won, because they were playing out their butts. They did great. They had all sorts of good scoring in the first half. And the San Francisco 49ers, whom I was pulling for at that point, looked like a death had occurred. Everybody, from the coach all the way down to the water boy, everybody had that look on their face of defeat. They were just amazed at what was happening. And it was like they were stuck in this tornado of gloom. And it was like, I don't think they can come back from this. I'm not sure if they can come back from this. So <laughs> halftime comes, and then 49ers decided they were going to play the way they can play and eventually won that game. Spoiler alert, if you haven't, if you taped it and didn't watch it, but they finally won that game, but they still had to fight for it, which made it a good game. And yet the petty party of one definitely showed up. So <laughs> here is my relationship with Trump. And this is my moment of growth and grace. You may think I have not grown very far <laughs> with, my, with this behavior, but I have. In 2016, I was just floored that this nation voted Trump in. I hold out a little bit of, of belief that it did get rigged on his side and that maybe Hillary would have won, but I don't know. The, the whole point is that back then, I was not stable. I was scared out of my wits because of him getting elected before and after. And I really haven't lost the fear of Trump yet. However, the palpable anger that I had back then because of the fear was just toxic. It was absolutely toxic. And I kept trying to remember that he was also a child of God. I kept remembering that he was created by God. I kept remembering that he really is a brother, even though he's like maybe a brother from the other side of the family. <laughs> I mean, but still, I was just so angry that he got elected. And I was so angry at everything that he represented. He represented disrespect. He represented ugliness. He represented making fun of people with cerebral palsy or other conditions. It just everything about him eked for me just ugliness. And my anger was off the charts. So we're, I know we're talking about number two, Petty Party for One, but it also was based in the back 2016 era of when my anger was at a rampant, rampant high. And those thoughts of harming others came out at that point for sure and was directed to that one person. So the thing that, that I have had to give myself grace about is that I acknowledged back then how ugly that was for me. And every day since then, I not only talked it over with my priest during confession that first year that I was leaning back in to church, and I could say and give myself grace about the fact that I have come further than that now. I can now recognize that he is 
a child of God. I still have a hard time loving him. I still have my fears about him. I have huge distrust for him, which I think is just normal. You can give me comments about that if you don't think it's normal to fear him and also believe that he's not going to do anything good for not only our community, but for many parts of our nation. Um, so I have a realistic viewpoint of him now, but I also can include the understanding and the belief that he is a child of God. He is a brother in the family of God with me, and I still don't like him. So, you know, I haven't completed my journey of just loving without any reservations. And maybe you always have reservations. I don't, that's the, that's the piece that I know that I, I need to love him. But I, I know that I don't have to necessarily like him. However, I just want to do better. And so I give myself grace that I'm always expanding and trying to do better than I was the day before, or sometimes the moment before. So it's still a work in progress with that. And I am embarrassed to admit this to you that I would not pull for a team because they are somehow connected in voting for Trump. I have also done that for other restaurants, though, when I find out that they are against our community and that they're actually paying money um, to organizations that hate us and want to harm us, I will stop eating at their restaurants. So I've done that in the past and I've done it now. So I don't know where that puts me if that's petty or if that's just being a good citizen. You know, we can always frame this any way we want it, but I still believe that any time that I'm not openly loving another person, I just don't feel right about that and I don't like it. And so I'm still on my path of being love in everything I think, say, and do. And I also give myself grace when I'm human. And then I follow that up with trying to figure out how to expand and to grow more into love, even though I disappoint myself. So are you still with me or did you cut this off at the very beginning and say, no, I don't want to be triggered and I don't want to hear anything that Mitch has to say about this. But we are at number three. So my number three shadow is I perseverate. I perseverate over a lot of things. Um, I can't let certain thoughts go. Like I, And part of this, now I might be honest, I do believe that I have a tad of obsessive compulsive disorder. My wife might think it's a little bit more than a tad, but I know that it's not as much as other people in my family have. So that, I call it a tad. Maybe I'm just trying to, you know, live in oblivion. But um, so some of these things, when I wrote this down preparing for today, I thought, oh, maybe this is just my OCD. But I, I don't know. But the perseveration is a shadow for me because it 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 ruminates. I get into ruminating uh, past mistakes. And so then that becomes ugliness toward me. It's not something that I'm acting out toward others, but but it becomes a very negative space for me to sit in when I can't let certain thoughts go. Like I'll start thinking about things I've done in the past and I start ruminating on those. And then I just feel embarrassed and then I feel less than and I start going into that negative spiral you know down 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 and and then just feeling really cruddy about myself instead of knowing that I'm a beloved child of God and that everything I've done in my life is a part of growth and that the mistakes that I've made the times that I've had to turn around the ugliness that has happened all of that needs to be a part of wisdom instead of a part of dislike for myself. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm hyper vigilant in it sometimes. I don't want to have things to look back and ruminate over. So I'm always trying to prevent bad things from happening for myself or for others. Like I will make decisions way ahead of time to try to prevent any possible problem for my wife or for someone. It's, it's like I don't want the drama of that. So I create drama to avoid the drama of something going wrong. It's 
I've said this before to my wife. It's hard being Midge. <laughs> it's just, I put myself through so much that I don't need to put myself through. And I'm not trying to be a martyr about it. It's just that, that I just organically do that. I have always been hot wired to do that. And I believe that sometimes when I look back at, at children of trauma, they have always tried to get as much information as possible so they're not surprised because surprises were not always good in some kids' lives. I saw that as I worked with kids through most of my career is that they were hyper vigilant in finding out every little detail or every little thing because their life before coming into this foster home or their life before getting adopted was so chaotic and scary that they needed to have all of the information. And I actually find myself sometimes doing that, that I need to know things. I don't like always to be surprised. I want to plan. I want, you know, even with the, the way that I serve at church, you know, just the other day, for the first time ever, I had to read something in front of people that I had not prepared from the lectern. And I was caught off guard. I thought I knew what the readings were, but at the last minute, the readings got changed, and I didn't have time to read them through. And so I had to get up in front of people and read from the lectern. Now, I can read to people all the time without having it planned, but this was like in a church setting. It it makes me more nervous, and I don't want to take away from anybody's experience by, you know, messing it up really badly. I, I, I've gotten to the point where I know I can make mistakes, and I'm still loved, and everything's good, but I just try to plan ahead, and, and I practice, and I don't want to do it poorly. Um, part of that is out of my love for God, but also out of my love for the community that I'm serving for. However, just the other day, I had to read without preparing, and it went okay. I was fine with it. It was fine. However, that's not my normal. My normal is not to just get up and wing it. My normal is to try to prevent bad things from happening, making sure that everybody's okay, planning everything out in detail in my head, and then trying to make sure that it goes that way. It's exhausting, and it's also, I think, clinically not right. <laughs> and it also takes away from the moment. Trying to make everything fit into a little box like that is just not healthy. And it and it takes away the flow of what could just be something that unfolds and be absolutely beautiful. Even if it sometimes has a little hiccup along the way, it may be exactly what everybody needed to have in their life that day. So those are my top three that I have an anger issue that's quick and I don't always know it's coming and all of a sudden it's here and I have to deal with it. I am a petty party of one, especially when it comes around my brother Trump. And I also perseverate greatly on things of my past that I wish I could change and I can't. The growth that I have made in the last many years is is something that I'm proud of and I know that I can grow more and I give myself grace for the times that I fail and the times that I miss the mark and the times that I am not the person that I do believe God created me to be and I give myself grace for stepping up and being that person of love many more times during my life than not. By sharing my shadows with you, I hope that you will give yourself grace if you found any of my shadows also lurking in you. Or you may have thought, well, those aren't mine, but I know what mine are. And I'm not asking you to share those with me. You can if you want, but I'm not asking you to do that. I just want you to be aware that we all have shadows. We've all been through things. We've been through religious trauma. We've been through abuse of many different forms. We have had lives that might not have nurtured us. We might have had lives that absolutely disrespected us. And yet, we're all still standing. We're here. We're queer. And we love to lean in to the God of our understanding. And you are here and I'm here because that's the voice that needs to rise up in the world today. That love has to be 
the thing that we do first and often. And when we miss the mark, we turn around and we go back to love, not only for others, but for ourselves. Giving ourselves grace helps us to build up that love for ourselves so that we can then extend that to others. I promise you, we can't love well toward others if we don't love ourselves first. That's why I think that's the way it was. The greatest commandment is to love yourselves and to love others. And we have to start with ourselves because if we don't, we're dry and we're barren in our soul. And we need to be able to be fruitful and to build more love in the world, to bring that out. Because right now it's a scary time with everybody at war and fighting and just not being able to access that love for each other. And I clearly admitted that I can't love him yet. I, I brought that up at the healing service just last Wednesday with Mother Erica that I wanted healing for not being able to love Trump. And she just smiled and said, that's a tall order. <laughs> and I will never quit trying to be the person that I know that I'm created to be. And I know I can't be perfect. I know I'm going to have to miss the mark and I'm going to have to keep turning back around. However, I'm not going to quit because I want to be as close to that as I possibly can in my human state because it's who I am organically. I hope you'll take a moment today to sit in silence and just dig in a little bit to yourself as to what things may show up for you. And I please, please, please want you to not beat yourself up about it, but to just view it as if looking through a, a lens, just view it and jot down some things that, that resonate with you and then see how you can take the next step to turn around and give yourself some grace about it, but also to turn around and take what, that one step toward changing it. We catch it, we challenge it, we change it, and then we can claim it as a new way to put ourselves out into the world. Even if you have to keep going back through those steps, and that's what I do in coaching with my clients, is we look at things, we, we catch it, we challenge it, we work toward changing it so that you can claim a new way of being in the world that is authentically you and organically who you were created to be. Hit me up on some comments about this, and I would love to see what resonated for you. You do not have to openly disclose your own shadows, but just let me know if this landed. I would love to know how you felt about it. And I want to thank you for honoring me with your listening ears. And I always, always am open to hearing what you're thinking about this podcast. Remember to go to the show page at empoweredmidge.podbean.com to get your access code AMIDGE so that you can have a discount at the Wild Goose Festival this year. Check out the Facebook group, Gay With God, where we do our monthly group entitled My Faith Journey. You need to join the Gay With God Facebook group first, answer all the questions so I can see you on the inside, and then you are absolutely free to come to that group. We love having new members. It's so exciting. If you need support to help you through your coming out and or faith journey, go to the show page at empoweredmidge.podbean.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and see how you can connect with me to receive some coaching. You can also find me on my website, gaywithgod.com. If you are listening to this podcast and are questioning whether you can be gay and be in a relationship with the God of your understanding, if you identify as LGBTQIA+, are not even sure if you are gay, God has always been within you, even when you didn't know it. You have always been gay with God. Thank you, everybody. Stay tuned to see how you can join the Gay With God community. And as always, you are loved. I want to invite you to become a part of the Gay With God community. How can you do that? Stay connected by messaging me your thoughts and comments in the comment section under the downloads of the show on the Gay With God show page. 
Subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen and share, share, share so we can increase our community outreach and be a light to those who are struggling to claim their faith. Consider being a sponsor so I can highlight your service in our community. We are all worthy of respect and a relationship with the God of our understanding. I want to thank you in advance for supporting this podcast. Together, we as a community will keep this show visible and our community stronger. Deep gratitude to my friend Tim McClendon of Tim McClendon Music for allowing me to use an excerpt from Interlude 4, a song found on his CD entitled Sundance.